Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. I wasn't able to finish the project I was working on because it rained today, so instead I thought I'd make this episode about other lights in the sky. Some of the sky's most wondrous sights can be things other than deep sky objects or stars or planets. One of them are rainbows. Anytime the sun comes out after a rainstorm, I always look for rainbows. And lo and behold, there's one now. <laughs> so after the sun comes out after a rainstorm, I always look for rainbows. And whenever the sunlight goes through a droplet of water, it refracts the light into its component colors, like a prism, and it appears in the sky like a curve of colors opposite the sun. Rainbows never occur when the sun is at the zenith. They only occur when the sun is less than 42 degrees from the horizon. And the closer the sun is to the horizon, the longer the arc of the rainbow. A double rainbow occurs when you're double lucky and when the air is saturated with raindrops. Then the light bounces through two reflections in the raindrops, causing a secondary bow outside the primary bow and with the colors in reverse. If you see a double rainbow, look for Alexander's dark band. And that's a darkening of the sky between the two bows and a lightening of the sky inside the main bow. Another thing to look for is sunset. In the sunsets, you may see a green flash. You should never look directly at the sun, but when the sun is Low on the horizon, just about to set, it's safe to look at it. And at those times, you might see a green flash just before the sun sinks below the horizon. Uh, but even if you don't see the green flash, you still get to see a sunset. And right after the sun sets, be sure to turn around and face east. And there, you might see two other phenomena, the belt of Venus and the Earth's shadow. As the sun sets in the west, sunlight reflects off of the dense atmosphere in an effect called backscattering, and that creates a pink band of light on the horizon opposite from the sun above the antisolar point. This pink band is called the belt of Venus. And just before the sun sets, there's a low, flat, dark blue band rising up from the horizon in the east, and this is the Earth's shadow. And it stretches for nearly 180 degrees, and is bounded above by the pinkish anti-twilight arch, and below by the horizon. The Earth's shadow is best seen when the sky is clear and the line of sight is long and unobstructed. Another object to look for in the sky associated with the sun are sun dogs. A sun dog is a concentrated patch of sunlight that is occasionally seen about 22 degrees to the left or the right of the sun. Sun dogs often come in pairs on either side of the sun when the sunlight refracts through icy clouds containing hexagonal plate crystals that are aligned uh, with their large flat surfaces parallel to the ground. Technically, they're known as parhelia or uh, singular as parhelion, and they're often white, but sometimes they can be quite colorful, looking like detached pieces of a rainbow with red on the inside and toward the sun and blue on the outside. You can also see halos around the sun or the moon. A sun halo is a circle of light that creates a circle 22 degrees wide around the sun. And as with sun dogs, they're caused by hexagonal ice crystals that are suspended in cirrostratus clouds and they refract the sunlight to create the halo. And they're sometimes also called an ice bow or nimbus or a gloriole. Unlike sun dogs, though, which generally only can be seen when the sun is near the horizon, the halo around the sun is visible even when the sun is high in the sky. And you can also see halos around the moon, usually when the moon is full, but they can also occur even when the moon is gibbous. 
Some people think you can only see the moon at night, but of course that's not true. You can see the moon during the day 14 days out of every month. And here's a time lapse I made of the last quarter moon setting in the middle of the day. Be sure to watch right below it sinks below the mountain for the puff. Around the first quarter moon, you can see it rising in the east in a clear blue sky. Another wondrous light in the sky is to see the full moon rising. If you catch it, it may appear to be larger than normal to you, and that's due to the Ponzo illusion, where objects farther away are perceived to be bigger. Another beautiful sight to look for regarding the moon is to look for earth shine or what some people call the old moon and the new. This is when the moon is at its th crescent phase and only a thin sliver of the disk is illuminated by the sun. And you can see earth shine on the waxing moon up to five days old. If you live 45 degrees to 60 degrees north or south, you can look for beautiful noctilucent clouds, also known as polar mesopheric clouds. They occur at night around the summer solstice and also for those living in far northern latitudes and I do mean northern <laughs> there are necratious clouds also known as ice polar stratospheric clouds necratious clouds occur in the winter time when the temperatures in the stratosphere fall below the frost point they're most common in Antarctica they've also been observed in the Arctic Scotland Scandinavia Alaska Canada and Russia because it occurs even from lower latitudes is air glow. Air glow is a chemical fluorescence created by oxygen, nitrogen, and hydroxyl molecules absorbing energy from the sun during the day and releasing that energy at night. They're usually green, but they can be red and even yellow, but they're usually too faint to be seen with your eye and they just show up in your nightscape photos. Another subtle light, but one that you can see from a dark sky sight from any latitude is the zodiacal light. And that is sunlight refracting off of interplanetary dust in our solar system. It appears as a pyramid of light 20 to 30 degrees above the western horizon. And finally, there is the beautiful arch made by the Milky Way in the northern hemisphere with the core from April to October. You can also see the arch of the winter Milky Way in the Northern Hemisphere, but it will not be as bright because it won't include the core, but it's beautiful nevertheless. And of course, you must go to a dark sky site for the wondrous sight of the Milky Way arching over the sky. That's it for now. I'll see you soon. Until then, get out and enjoy the sky. Sula, signing off.